Hey y'all, what's up? I'm sorry if my voice sounds funny. I'm not feeling all that great, but the Lord has truly showed me something. And leave your prayer requests in the bottom. We need to pray for Israel, and we also need to pray for the people of Canada. I'm still, I'm in shell shock over this. 2,000 earthquakes in 24 hours off the coast of Canada. They're suggesting that the ocean floor is ripping apart. Here's the article. I'll even show you. Now, I did try to make this video before, but as I was playing it back, the Holy Spirit kept pointing out 2000, 2000, 2000, 2000. And I was like, why do I, I'm like, why is that so significant? And then I got the end of an error, the end of the age of grace, an end of a dispensation. The ark door is about to be shut and the seven years of tribulation is about to begin. The age of grace, our time on this earth is coming to a close. We are about to be raptured to be with Jesus. God's about to call us home. God's about to tell Jesus, go get your bride. There's a reason why he gave us 2,000 earthquakes in 24 hours. There's a reason why that 2,000 sticks out like a sore thumb. I, I'm still in shell shock, but that's an alarm bell. That's God sounding the alarm. That's God waking us up. That's God saying, look, here's another sign. Here's another significant number. Two thousand if you guys are in canada and you guys have experienced these earthquakes um and you need prayer please let us know so we can pray for you um god is in control Th this is insane you guys just looking at this has got me like, there's no denying that that is another alarm clock. And I know a lot of the world's going to hit snooze on it. Blow it off. Oh, it's just more earthquakes. It's fine. It don't affect us. Snooze, snooze, snooze. And eventually, the big alarm bell is going to go off and that'll be the rapture. A lot of people aren't going to be able to hit snooze and blow it off because it's going to affect not only them, but it's going to change how the earth works, how it functions, how it smells, how it tastes, how it looks. It's The rapture is going to change everything to do with the earth. And the Antichrist can come on the scene and take full control. Everything's about to change. And this was another alarm bell to try to wake people up. And still a lot of people are going to hit snooze and go back to sleep. Because they don't want to be bothered with the truth. Satan's got the, tr got, Satan's got the truth looking like nasty and terrible to the people that are asleep. And Satan's got these lies looking so great and good. Like a freshly baked yummy cookie. And... They they want to eat and pro partake in this something that's so disgusting that Satan has convinced them is the greatest thing in the world. And they want to ignore the thing that is good and precious and pure and holy and the best thing for them. Because Satan has them looking at it as if it's a pile of garbage. And... You know, the people who keep rejecting Jesus, when they wake up, they're going to have something called regret that they didn't accept Jesus in the age of grace. They're going to wake up and realize that they were fed a lie that the first, at least first three and a half years of tribulation aren't going to be so bad. 
they're going to wake up and realize it's a lie and they're just going to, they're going to have to live with this regret and they're going to have to resist the mark of the beast. They're going to have to die, be tortured, starved to death, be dehydrated. They're going to have to go through so much stuff. All because they they decided to go ahead and reject Jesus. Rejecting Jesus is not something you want to do. Y yeah, you may say, hey, yeah, yeah, I want to reject Jesus. I don't need Jesus. I'll, I'll just wait and see. Everything's going to be fine. And you want to believe the lie of the enemy. And you will soon find out that you were wrong. And you're going to have to live with that regret, guilt, shame. Nobody's fault but yours. You know, um, people, people who, who don't want to own up to, to what they did love to surround themselves with people who will, who will get maybe a little mad or frustrated at what they did, but then we'll turn around and be like, oh, well, we'll just go ahead and sweep what you did under the rug and pretend like it never happened. And if anybody else wants to not condone what you did and make it seem like it's okay and that it never happened, then we're just going to cut those people off because, because we want to make sure that your behavior is justified and that you don't feel guilty for what you did wrong. And, um, I know a few people like that. It's, yeah, yeah I'm going to tell you right now, it's not easy to own up to what you did, but the truth will always set you free. And if you're one of these people who, who go, oh, I did something wrong, but we're going to pretend like it didn't happen. We're not even going to we're not even going to acknowledge what I did and we'll just blame it on somebody else and let them take the rap for it and you know we'll make we'll make sure we cut them off and make sure blah 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 but it, it's just a horrible cycle and eventually you're not gonna have that group surrounding you that's going to be like Oh, you screwed up. Oh, let, let's just sweep it under the rug and pretend like you didn't have it. And we'll blame it on somebody else who doesn't want to agree with our situation. You're, eventually, you're going to have to own up to what you did. You're going to have to pay the price for what you did. And if you don't, you're going to have nothing but regret. And eventually, there's going to come a point where there is no more fixing what you did wrong. You have to suffer the consequences for all eternity. If you reject Jesus, your your consequences are terrible. The seven years of tribulation, if you don't die before the seven years, they're terrible. If you take the mark of the beast, your consequences are even worse. It's, it's just, it's just not a good thing to, to reject Jesus. But a lot of people seem to think that because we're in the age of grace and they're so used to grace that it's always going to be there. And it's not. It's about to end. And this was a warning. This was a sign. This was a warning. We need to wake up. We need to give our life to Jesus. We need to stop acting like the age of grace is always going to be here. We need to stop taking the age of grace for granted. We need to stop pretending like nothing bad will truly ever happen. And we need to stop pretending that hell is not a real place. Um... One thing I have, um, I've realized is people, people really love to go, Hey, I know that the person that died was 
rejected Jesus. I know they were an alcoholic. I know that they did drugs, smoked weed, and that they were they were into Ouija boards and crystals and they were a Satan worshiper, but 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 they when they died, they went to heaven because Jesus loves them. Jesus would never send nobody to hell. And if you try to tell them, well, did you not hear what you just said? If you try to tell them the truth, they tell you, no, we all go to heaven. Jesus loves us. Nobody will, nobody ever gets sent to hell. That's a story to scare people. And it's like, there's no reasoning with people like that. They find comfort in the lie instead of facing the truth. The truth hurts. And I have to, honestly, I have to say, like, you see this right here? That is my brother-in-law, Matt. Matt rejected Jesus. Matt was into Satan music. Matt was into crystals. Uh, he did weed. I don't know what other drugs he might have did. He, he flat out would tell you, I hate Jesus. I hate God. And he, I mean, he was a heavy drinker and stuff and... When he died, he, uh, he actually scared people. Like, people literally thought he had a demon in him. And I believe that he did with, with the circumstances surrounding his death. And he, um, he actually was in a hotel room and he took, he actually had to get drunk and high and he wrapped his neck with a um, sheet and put it to the door and strangled himself to death. And what amazed me is I said, it's sad that hell got somebody who could have been a great man. And everybody hated me for it. Everybody told me that I was a liar and they shouldn't speak such things and what also really got me is that there's a preacher who's the family preacher um he was married to um one one of my husband's aunts and the preacher actually ended up marrying us because that's the guy that my husband wanted us to get married by but anyways I was shocked that even the preacher said it doesn't matter how much bad and how much Matt rejected Jesus and how much he was submersed in the culture of Satan that he was going to heaven. And I'm sitting here going, you're a preacher. Well, how can you sit there? And spout such lies. And I was basically told to, to shut up. I didn't know what I was talking about. And if the preacher, the family preacher said that Matt's in heaven, then Matt's in heaven. And I was just sitting there flabbergasted by it. A lot of people don't like me to talk about how Matt died. A lot of people don't like me to talk about the truth because they want to believe the truth to be a lie and the lie to be a truth. And everybody keeps saying that Matt's in heaven playing his guitar for Jesus. And that he's floating in the clouds having a grand life. And the Holy Spirit just really has, every time somebody says that, the Holy Spirit says, they believe a lie. They believe a lie. Matt's in hell you know the truth and you know I understand not wanting to own up to reality and face it because reality 
hurts sometimes. The truth hurts. Not everybody goes to heaven. A lot of people go to hell. But nobody wants to admit that. Because they find comfort in the lie. And... I get it. When you're hurting, you're gonna, you're, you want to cling to the one thing where you can find the most comfort, not necessarily the truth. And, you know, when you think about it, a lot of people are probably going to believe the great deception because the Lord says there will be a great deception that falls upon the earth. And a lot of people are probably going to be believe that great deception because it sounds better than the truth. It, it's going to sound, to them, it's going to sound more comforting than the truth. Um, I'm going to show you somebody. That's my grandpa. There's my grandma and grandpa. My grandma died before my grandpa. So, my grandma died before my grandpa. My grandma was one of the people, like, we talked about Jesus to her all the time. And she would always say, I'm a good person. I'm, I'm going to go to heaven because I'm a good person. And I know that's a lie. My grandpa used to think the same way. Um, I don't know. I know my grandma was on her deathbed. I didn't get to see her. So, I, I don't know if she got saved on her deathbed like my grandpa did. I honestly don't know if I'm going to see my grandma again. The Holy Spirit hasn't really given me confirmation either way. Um, But my grandpa. Boy, God moved through a dream, through prayer. And he used a teamwork of people. God even used hell to save my grandpa on his deathbed. It, it's, I, I've said, I've had this, I've shared the story before. It's a long story, but the Holy Spirit gave me confirmation when my grandpa died. The Holy Spirit gave me confirmation that I will see my grandpa again. Because I got confirmation that my grandpa gave his life to the Lord on his deathbed. My grandpa experienced hell upon this earth. My grandpa was speaking with the snake demons. It, it's a powerful, powerful thing. God kept my grandpa safe through it all. And my, my grandpa decided to give his life to Jesus. And I know I'm going to see him again. I'm excited to see my grandpa. I'm excited. It just, it just really amazes me. How. How truly. Sometimes we can tell. Who we're going to see in heaven and. Sometimes we won't know until we get to heaven. And you'll know people by their fruits. I knew Matt by his fruits. That's how I knew where he went. His fruits. My grandma, I'm not really sure. She was a really good person. She really was. She was the sweetest grandma, most loving, kind, compassionate woman you would ever meet. But I don't know if she gave her heart to the Lord. I don't know if she truly gave her life to Jesus before she died. My grandpa, he was a great man. Like, he literally was... He was bullheaded, he was stubborn, he was sweet, he was kind, he loved his grandchildren, 
he would he would move heaven and earth to make us happy and he gave his life to Jesus on his deathbed and the holy spirit gave me confirmation of where he was so the truth is sometimes we'll we'll know sometimes we won't And sometimes we get confirmation and sometimes we don't. Because each person in this world has to give an account. They have to make a decision to either accept or reject Jesus. And sometimes you get a clear picture of bad, rotten fruit. That is not of Jesus. And other times you get a picture of good fruit, but you don't really know if there's actual fruit on the tree. Which, which brings me to another uh, verse that I, I can't remember, but I remember Jesus walked up to a tree and it, it looked like it had fruit, but it didn't. And I can't remember exactly how the story went, but I think Jesus ended up cursing or killing the tree or something because it it had the appearance of producing fruit, but yet it produced no fruit. And I think that just really relates to how people can look like they are producing abundance of fruit, but yet when you look at them, they produce no fruit. Some people produce clear signs of pure, rotten fruit. Others produce fruit that is of God. And others look like they've produced fruit, but yet they have nothing. They've produced nothing. And wow, the Holy Spirit just really led me to talk about that. We are in the end days. We need to we need to be able to make sure we are producing fruit, good fruit, God's fruit, Jesus' fruit. We are supposed to be the bride of Christ. We don't need to have a mask on and look like we're producing all fruit, but yet when people get close, they see absolutely nothing. We don't need to say, oh, I'm a Christian, but yet we produce all this bad, rotten fruit and we try to cover it up to pretend to be Christian. Or we don't need to be over here. No, we need to be over here producing the fruit of Jesus. We're the salt of the earth. We're the light of the world because Jesus is working through us. We're close. We're close. So what tree are you going to be? Are you going to be the tree that produces good godly fruit? Or are you going to be the tree that produces rotten, stinky, nasty fruit that Satan tries to make look good, but it's really not? Or do you want to be the tree that looks like they're producing fruit, but really they're producing nothing? I, for one, want to be the tree that stands tall and proud and produces the fruit of God. I want to be a vessel for God to use me for his kingdom, honor, praise, and glory. Knowing that I'm, I'm not going to be perfect. I, I'm, I'm pretty imperfect. I'm, I'm a sinner in need of a savior. But it's okay. I've got the best pruner in the world. God, God's going to prune me right up and make me blossom and grow. I don't want to be the one that looks like I'm producing fruit, but actually producing nothing. And I really don't want to produce rotten, stinky, nasty, yucky fruit. I want to be fully submerged in Jesus. I don't want to believe the lie. I don't want to believe what Satan has over here. I want to believe Jesus. I want to follow Jesus. Jesus. I want to reject the world and follow Jesus. I want to, I would rather be judged by the world 
and stand with Jesus. I don't want to stand with the world and be judged by God. Like, I, I would rather stand with Jesus than be judged by the world because the world is getting what it deserves. And what it deserves is hell. What it deserves is the seven years of tribulation. Right now we're in the age of grace. But everything's about to change. <sighs> I, I still can't get over this. 2,000 earthquakes in 24 hours on the Canada coast. Off the Canada coast. Like, what? God speaking. Are you listening? Or are you just going to hit snooze? All right, well, I'm going to get off here. Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you in my next video, or I'll see you in heaven, whichever one comes first. Hopefully, it's heaven, because I'm ready to get up out of here. <laughs> All right, make sure you do leave your prayer request in the bottom, and let's pray for the people that I'm not sure what the impacts are. I haven't been able to find what the impacts are or anything. Um... Hopefully, with it a little bit, I'll be able to figure out more stories about what's going on and give you guys an update or whatever. But, wow. Just, I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right. Bye, y'all.